this correct computer. Good morning, everybody. Um, my name is Honor Tram Leung, and um, I'm from Honor Way Marketing. For those of you that don't know me, we walk, work with a lovely selection of properties and camps around uh, southern and east Africa. Um, this is the third of a series of webinars that we've been running, uh, inviting our clients to come and chat to you. Um, we've been having lots of requests for people updating their websites, um, their social media, um, but also for media. And so we thought it'd be a nice way to get our clients to come and chat to you, not only about their products and the locations they're in, but also um, about what's happening on the ground, um, you know, what they're doing in their local communities, conservation, etc. Um, and hopefully in turn, it'll inspire and engage you as well. Um, I'm also, again, very delighted with the response that we've had. It's been, um, it's been really brilliant. So thank you very much for all your time um, in joining us. Um, today's focus is going to be on Zambia again. Last week we had Nick chatting about Zambia in general, and today we have Green Safaris with Vincent Gauenhoven, the founder of Green Safaris, and Bronwyn, who is the business development manager. Um, they are going to be chatting about their camps in the Kafui, the Luangwa, Lake Malawi, um, and the latest edition being Tongabizi. However, we have got a Tongabizi webinar next week, so they will touch upon that one. Before we start talking about Green Safaris today, just a little bit of housekeeping. We will deal with questions next, uh, at the end of the presentation. So please, can you put them in the chat panel and I will then uh, read them out at the end so either Vincent or Bronwyn can uh, deal with them. Um, we will also be sending out a follow-up email. So we will send a recording of today's presentation so you can share this with colleagues or in case someone's missed it. But also we will be sending out the rates manual, a selection of media and videos um, and anything else that might help you in what you need. But of course, we're here to support you. So now on to uh, what's important. As many of you know, I started my journey in Africa, in Zambia at Tongabizi 16 years ago. Um, and I've always had a huge passion for Zambia. Um, but I've also worked with Kayamawa for 11 years. So it's really exciting to hear today uh, Vincent and Bronwyn talking about them in more detail. Green Safari started roughly about five years ago with Illa Safari Camp and has grown into a wonderful selection of camps and lodges. Um, and I'm delighted to present Vincent, who will kick off this um, presentation a bit more about his dreams for Africa, how Green Safaris came to be, the ethos and the things that they're doing on the ground. And then Brummel will talk more about the camps uh, and where they're located. So without further ado, I'm going to hand you over to Vincent, who will kick off. Welcome, Vincent. Okay, thanks, Honor. I'm delighted to, uh, to have the opportunity to share with you a little bit of the background of Green Safaris, um, mostly on um, how we deal with the current situation, um, and then hopefully um, handing over to Bronwyn to make you more excited about um, what we have to offer as soon as the market will be open again. Um, just a little bit um, of background into Green Safaris. Um, personally, I lost my heart in Africa about 30 years ago, and I lost it even more about 10 years ago when I first visited the, the Kafui National Park. Um, third biggest park in Africa, um, hugely unknown um, for a strange reason. It is 22 square thousand kilometers, a little bit bigger than Kruger National Park. And whereas Kruger gets about 2 million visitors a year, um, we on average get about 15,000. And that explains a little bit um, where my, my true passion for conservation um, and community development started that has led to the foundation of Green Safaris. Um, visiting the Kafui 10 years ago, um, the park was over um, poached. Um, it was in quite a desolate state. Um, and I quickly learned that um, the presence of lodges would be a, a very important stepping stone in basically um, creating jobs, um, educating people, getting movement in and around the park. It is striking that wherever there's a lodge in the park, um, there's a, a, a huge um, uh, reduction in, in poaching. And, and that was one of the driving forces initially um, to start Green Safaris. Um, with a background more in tech than in hospitality, um, I also felt like um, we needed to 
create something really new and, and utilize new technologies to make our camps um, the most sustainable camps um, ever. And that sort of led me to build the very first electric game drive vehicle about eight years ago or so um, to entirely reduce the footprint and um, um, increase um, the, the, the customer value out of game drives. So we launched the first electric game drive vehicle um, some time ago and now um, Green Safari is being what, what we are, shifting the entire fleet into um, electric game drive vehicles, e-boats and what have you. Um, initially, um, five years ago, um, we opened ELA Safari Lodge in the heart of the Kafui, built in a very sustainable way using um, very ancient building techniques, sandbag building, um, to again limit uh, the impact on a piece of land, pristine land that was given to us um, to operate a lodge. The obvious things like um, everything being solar based, um, we introduced the biogas um, uh, installation in that camp. And now five years down the line, we continue to constantly look for improvements to, to be, um, to have the lowest possible footprint um, across our campus. Um, from ELA um, came the idea to, um, to expand this with the sole driver for Green Safaris and myself um, to contribute to conservation and community development. We saw the model work at ELA um, and yeah, then why not expand this um, into a, a very attractive circuit where we can um, uh, increase that, that impact. Um, what you have seen that by now, uh, Green Safaris consists of six properties, three self-built, self-developed, and three uh, through acquisition, uh, like Kayamawa, two now, three years ago, and then recently Tongabesi and Sinabesi um, to be added to, to the portfolio. Um, Whenever we build our camps ourselves, like Shawa Camp in Sasuwanga or the Bird's Nest Camp on the Musanga Plains, it's quite obvious that we, we can do everything to make it as sustainable as, as possible. And when acquiring lodges, um, we um, at Kayamawa and at Tonga Besi start a process of greenification um, to make sure that, you know, across the group, um, our lodges are not only on the most beautiful locations, but are truly um, sustainable. Um, what they have in common, all of them, is that by the end of the day, it's about giving our customers amazing experiences, but also to engage them in what our core mission is, and that is um, conservation and community development. So we have a wide array of, of projects all the time um, in and around the lodges, where we, we love to um, involve our clients uh, with. Now, quickly moving over to where we stand right now. Um, I was um, visiting all lodges early March when it became very, very clear that, uh, uh, you know, this um, whole COVID situation would, uh, would have a massive impact. Um, what we did ever since, um, was realizing um, this won't be over in July, this won't be over in September most likely, and it, it might even take until April next year before, you know, a vaccine is there, airlines are back on track, and uh, quarantine restrictions are lifted. Um, there will be a part of our audience um, that will be reluctant uh, to hop on a plane to, to Africa for a while. So what do we do? Um, I see many lodges have closed. Well, we haven't closed. Um, we, um, as of today, have kept Ilas Fari Lodge in the Kafui uh, open and Sinabesi uh, Lodge at the Victoria Falls open um, because there definitely is a local market, a resident market, interested in visiting us. Um, the other camps um, have been sort of, yeah, yeah, well, they, they are. Um, um, open, not open, um, people just can't get there now. Um, but we think that as soon as airlines um, 
are returning and the quarantine restrictions are lifted, we are agile to uh, receive clients again. In the meantime, um, we wanted um, to prevent making our um, quite substantial number of staff redundant and find other ways to um, keep them busy working on what we stand for, conservation again and community development. So um, all of our staff at all of the properties is currently working on a, a huge number of projects. Um, first and foremost, um, educating the local communities about Corona and what impact it might, might have. Um, setting up uh, sanitation uh, systems in the villages where, um, uh, where there's fresh water and, and um, um, soap available um, to all the people in those communities. We're increasing at the same time our um, other portfolio of um, conservation projects like um, the reforestation program. We started last year at Likoma Island, um, where Kayamawa, uh, Kayamawa is. Um, we're expanding our community farm um, outside the Kafui National Park um, to um, start delivering purely um, biological uh, vegetables, not just to Ila, but to other parties um, in and around the Kafui. And it, it gives me great delight to see that, okay, even in, in the absence of um, visitors, um, you know, most of our staff is not idle. Uh, we turn this massive disadvantage of not having staff into an advantage into expanding our, our footprint, so to say, um, in what was, is, and will be our core purpose. Um, hopefully, um, a vetsan will be there. Hopefully, the, your clients, people who book um, African safaris, are a little bit less risk averse than average Joe. So as soon as it's possible, they will return. And hopefully um, they will appreciate um, not just our amazing portfolio um, and, and dream circuit, uh, combining the Kafui, the South Luanga, uh, a beach holiday on Kayamawa, and obviously um, one of the best lodges to visit the Victoria Falls. But they also will choose us because um, uh, we care, because, um, they want to travel with a purpose and they would love the idea to um, get engaged in what it is we stand for. Um, with that, I'd love to hand over uh, the floor to Bronwyn to tell you a bit more about where we are and what we have to offer. Thank you all. Thanks, Vincent. So, um, thanks so much for joining us today. Um, I'm going to start off with uh, Ila Safari Lodge, which is where Vincent says he lost his heart in Africa. This property is situated in one of the largest parks in the world, and the diversity of the landscape and the remoteness of the Kafui is really what makes this property so unique. Um, you know, it, it stands clear to us that we want your guests to experience that absence of crowds, where the only vehicle at sightings is ours. And when you're on your lunches um, or having sundowners on our electric boats, it's the only encounters you're going to have is with hippos and crocs. So the Kafui is also home to more than 500 bird species and has the richest bird life of any Zambian parks. It's also known for its cheetah sightings, which is uncommon for this part of the world and has the largest population of wild dog in Africa. So you can see why this truly is somewhere you should send your guests um, if they are looking for that beautiful safari circuit with the absence of other vehicles and, and um, you know, the crowds. Um, our next uh, this slide over here just depicts one of the beautiful um, tents. It's a river frontage property. Um, just really, really a, a superb way of, of um, starting or even ending a, a, a safari circuit. Our second property, our brand new, very exciting property in the Busanga Plains is Chisa Busanga Camp. Chisa meaning bird's nest is built in a highly sought after seasonal area of the Northern Kafui that is actually only open four months of the year. The rest of the time it's flooded and underwater. 
So these incredible birds' nests are elevated and they give you a bird's eye view of the plains, which is also known for its abundance of game with beautiful waterways. One of the truly magnificent sightings of this area is um, there's a herd of 200 elephants that um, actually live in the thickets. And in the mornings, they come out to walk across the plains in this beautiful pink mist that is created with the sunshine. And um, it's just a, an absolute first for um, uh, safari staying in these, these nests. Um, we also have the silent um, game viewers, as well as um, electric mountain bikes that your guests can enjoy um, mountain biking on the plains. Um, Chisa is also um, only a four hour drive from Ila or a quick 20 minutes and a flight and is easily accessible to Lusaka. Um, our third property, uh, Shawa Luangwa Camp, which is in South Luangwa, is another new property that we're very excited to share with you. This property is built in a pristine area with easy access to the Luangwa National Park as well as the Ensefu sector. Our guests are boated across the river to their game drive vehicles so that they are amongst the first to get into the parks first thing in the morning. And um, South Luangwa is uh, truly where your African walking safaris began. So our lodge's name is actually derived from the partnership that we have with Jacob Shower, who is a legendary uh, wanderlust amongst the best in the world professional guides who was actually born and grew up in this area. Um, his knowledge and his experience and his amazing enthusiasm is really what makes um, your guests stay here truly unforgettable. Right, and then um, our next property, which is um, Akaamawa, which is a beautiful beach property, idyllic for any safari circuit, um, to end off with a lovely stay um, at our beach property. It's a quick one hour flight from South Luangwa, and it really is easily accessible from Zambia. The island is located about halfway up um, on the lake um, on the Mozambican side, and that's why the water is so crystal clear um, and aligned for the most incredible diving and snorkeling. It's also one of the deepest freshwater diving at altitude in the world, with more than 1,500 fish species. So you really are um, forgiven for thinking that you are not at the ocean as uh, that beautiful water is tidal and constantly moving on shore. The island itself is also covered in magnificent baobab trees, um, opposed to palm trees. And uh, besides all the, the beautiful water activities on offer, um, your guests can also explore the island on our electric quad bikes. Um, the the uh, rooms itself are um, built between the boulders of the lake, all completely unique to each other. And this image just depicts, um, it shows you how each room has a beautiful jetty with direct access into the lake where you have your snorkels and your fins um, in your room. So Malawi as a beach destination should really be on any traveler's bucket list as this experience is, is certainly not to be missed. And then last, uh, certainly not least, is uh, Tongabezi and Sindabezi in Livingston. Um, we are so delighted to add these iconic properties to the Green Safaris portfolio. And there really is no better way of ending or starting off a trip through Zambia than at the Victoria Falls. Um, as Anna mentioned, she'll be hosting a webinar um, solely focusing on Tongabezi, Sindabezi and Livingston Island next week, where um, this year they'll be celebrating um, their 30th birthday and how they really have remained successfully as one of the most romantic lodges in Africa for all these years. Um, I'd like to 
end off today by uh, just showing you a little map where you can see how our properties are, are so beautifully interlinked um, with this wonderful circuit. Um, the, as you can see at the bottom of the map is where your Sindabezi, Tongabezi, a quick flight up, you've got your Ila, Chisa a little bit further north, and then where you would fly across to Santawangwa onto Kayamawa. So um, I will be following up with um, a lovely email with all the fact sheets, lodges, images, details, um, and access to our Dropbox. And I would only be too happy to conduct one-on-ones with maybe a little bit more in-depth on the properties if, uh, if you would like to hear just a little bit more about um, green safaris as, as our safari and beach circuits. Thank you. Thank you very much, Bronwyn. Um, just on the note, before we just go to some questions, um, on the note of Tonga Bizi, um, they're going to be celebrating their 30th birthday uh, throughout the month of June, and they've been running a photo competition. And so what I would really love from you is anyone who has visited Tonga Bizi, um, we are trying to collect all the throwback pictures from any time um, at all. So it could be last, last year, or it could be seven years ago. So we're trying to collect those pictures. Um, I will also be sending out a little newsletter about the month of celebrations. We are not only looking to collect all old pictures, we'd love for you to also post them throughout the month of June, tagging Tonga Bizi. And we are also looking to do a little birthday uh, drinks, uh, maybe cake cutting, maybe Tonga Bizi quiz around the 30th of June. Um, so I will also be sending out some information on that. Um, but what I would really love now is for questions, please. Um, we haven't got any as yet, but I would love some. Um, I've had one comment, Vincent, uh, telling us about your reforestation at Kayamawa. Alison said, that's absolutely fantastic. Reforestation in Malawi is desperately needed. Um, so that's a very positive comment. Um, but yes, questions. Um, I've had one um, now coming in going, where in the Luangwa is Shawa geographically um, located and what are the transfer times? Uh, will you be able to boat across all season? Um, yeah, um, it's, uh, it's about 50 minutes from um, Fui Airport. Um, you take the turn off to, um, if you know the area, to Zikoma, Zikoma Lodge. Um, and it's um, actually in between um, Zikomo Lodge and Robin Park Luanga uh, camp. Um, we have a concession um, to operate our own pontoon, uh, which is great. Um, so we boat our people across into the park um, in about two minutes, um, just opposite um, camp or just above camp. On the one hand, and on the other hand, if we drive our uh, guests out from the backside of our camp, it's about a 15, max 20 minute drive into the heart of the Ansefu uh, sector. Um, we will not um, start um, doing um, um, all year round. Um, uh, so as long as we're thinking uh, more and more about um, May 1 until uh, mid-December um, to operate this camp. And we might extend it in the future, um, but um, this year being the first um, year of opening, um, it's, it's going to be seasonal. Great. And how long is the drive from uh, Mfumi Airport? Um, which I just said, 50... Oh, sorry. sorry, I missed that one. I was just... Uh, uh, it's actually a lovely drive because you don't have to... Um, to go across all the hustle and bustle of Mafui town uh, as you take the turn off um, um, uh, yeah, just before Mafui town. It's a really, really lovely drive um, to be done in one of our electric vehicles, by the way, from the airport. And will you have the charging station at Shawa for them? Absolutely. It's all there. Brilliant. And when, is, when are Chisa and Shawa actually opening? Well, um, we wanted to open both of them um, um, by yeah, July, um, somewhere between uh, Ju July and September. Um, it doesn't really make sense in the absence of international clients to um, um, get them fully operational currently. 
Um, but as I said, we're agile. Um, if the circumstances would change in our favor, um, the teams are ready and, and we could, and we're still looking at September 1. Um, but um, having said that, if there are no international flights um, coming into the Zambia, we, we won't and we'll postpone it until early next year. Um, brilliant. And um, uh, fingers crossed for this year, to be honest. Um, can you please provide any high definition pictures of um, Chisa Basanga? Uh, someone is moving into a new web platform soon and it looks absolutely fantastic. But all the same for Shawa, have you got real um, high definition photos that people can start using to, to show on their websites? Yes. Um, what I'll do is um, I'll send through the links to our Dropbox where we have the, the, the images that you can use for your website's brochures. Um, Shawa currently is um, artist's impression, um, but Chisa, uh, we do oh, have... Um, Hold on, Ron. It's not just artist's impressions. It's not oh, okay. clear, but the first units are done. Um, so we do have um, uh, actual uh, photography of, of the camp. We're in the final stages of, uh, of finalizing um, Shabbat camp. Uh, probably a month from now, we'll have a, a full-fledged um, yeah, Dropbox with images, but we do have images of the first unit being erected. Okay. Um, well, if you, Bronwyn, send them to me this afternoon, then we can make sure they go out with the recording. That would be brilliant. Um, mm -hmm. A couple of questions about the Kafui now. What's the main difference between the locations of Illa and Chisa, the Sanga camp? Yeah, uh, the Kafui being as big as it is, uh, I mean, it's a, it's a part the size of Wales, I think. Um, the Kafui has, has many different um, areas with, with uh, complete different scenery. Um, Illa being on, um, on the river, um, gives uh, the dimension of, of um, combining walking safaris, game drives with um, boat cruises, and um, especially also for birding. And, and what you see on the riverbanks um, on an evening uh, sunset boat cruise in terms of game activity, that's very special there. The Gusaga Plains um, is probably the most famous part of the Kafui because it's, it's sort of, yeah, you could almost say it's, it's Zambia's Okavanga Delta. Um, it is these massive floodplains um, um, full of um, rare species, um, actually. You, you see game there that, uh, like um, uh, the lechery jumping over all those channels. Um, pretty impressive lion prides um, are roaming across these plains, so um, quite easy to, to um, uh, to track. Um, it is a completely different um, environment. It's so remote um, and so magical, um, it does something to every visitor, um, I dare say. And as, um, as Bronwyn also said, it's the diversity of species, because I drove from Basanga down to Illa a couple of years ago, and the landscape changes all the time, but there's 21 antelopes of which um, quite a lot you can't see anywhere else, like Rowan and Sable, you've got the Red Lechway. Um, so it also is quite an interesting park, not only for the diversity of landscape, but also diversity of wildlife that you see. And certainly the last time I was at Illa, I was very lucky to in every single game drive over, over two nights. So that would have been one, two, three, four game drives to see the cheetah that had actually dropped quite far south. So that was also fantastic. So I think it is the diversity of landscape and wildlife that makes it such interesting part to see the different areas. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so um, uh, one question again about Shawa is, oh no, sorry, Illa, is it anywhere near um, the old Lunga cabins? I don't actually know the uh, Lunga cabins. Mm -hmm. I thought they were near the Lunga River. Yeah, never, never heard of it. Um, I, I dare say I've been around for 10 years now and very often. Uh, um, no, that doesn't tell me anything. Uh, We'll have a look. I will investigate um, for that one. Um, I've had a comment uh, saying Chisa looks stunning, um, but we all know that uh, Zambia gets incredibly hot in October, November time. So actually for both the camps, um, Chisa and Shawa, how do you keep guests cool during the hotter months? 
Are there fans or aircon units in the chalets? Are they both solar powered, etc.? Yep. Green Safari is being green. Um, um, air conditioning um, just doesn't fit into our thinking. Um, at Shawa, for example, we've we've designed the tents in such a way. Uh, it wasn't really showing on that artist impression that um, yeah, they they resemble a little bit um, of a tipi kind of kind of um, look where the hot air is actually funneled um, to, the, to the top of the tent um, and with a small uh, ventilator uh, being funneled out of the tent. tent. The other really nice thing about uh, the tents at Shawa is that during the day, they um, open up 360 degrees. So you're sitting on your platform with your bed and your inside and outside shower and everything in full privacy covered by magnificent trees around you but on a completely open platform. Um, the tents are, the tent sites are lifted during the day, um, so the breeze goes yeah, um, all around you, and with that specific funnel architecture, um, the hot air um, will be funneled out during the night. Um, at um, uh, Chisa, um, you know, it's basically an aluminium frame, but covered in canvas, and on top of that, covered in thick layers of branches um, our teams collected off the ground. And that gives a splendid isolation. It not only makes it look stunning, but it's, it's um, the most natural way to um, isolate and keep these tents cool. Um, besides, um, uh, both Chisa and Shala um, uh, both have pools. Um, so if it really gets too hot, um, you can take a dip in the uh, in the pool in front of the BOMA um, for some breed. Um, brilliant. Um, just a reminder, how long is the road transfer from Lusaka to Kafui, um, i.e. Illa? And then how long would the transfer be from Illa to, um, I, know, I know you've actually suggested the flying, um, but but actually, one way driving is also pretty spectacular. But anyway, how long are the transfers, please? Yeah, we, we do recommend more and more our guests to um, either drive in and fly out, or fly in and, and drive out. Um, Lusaka um, Airport to Ila uh, is about three and a half to four hours, a bit traffic and, and day dependent. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and Ila to um, uh, Chisa would be another four hour drive. Um, but we do have a, a plane standby and, and we sort of encourage uh, more and more clients to um, actually hop on a scenic flight uh, to get from one camp to another. That goes, by the way, for all of our properties. Um, uh, we have arranged um, for direct flights from Tonga Basie, Victoria Falls into Chunga Airport close to Ila. Um, and from Busanga, they can um, um, fly in an hour back to Lusaka, then hop on a pro flight to Mufui, um, uh, where it's uh, um, a small hour uh, transfer drive into Shawa camp. Um, I saw a question about a transfer from Sasuanga to Likoma Island. Um, in the past um, year, more and more, um, we have been able to fly uh, our guests directly from Fui into Lukoma Island, with immigration being sorted. As of now, we, we, we simply still can't guarantee that that will always be the case and that no um, yeah, sort of dog leg via Lilongwe is required. Um, we have high hopes that um, as of next year, uh, it will become standard to fly people straight into Lukoma out of Mufui. Fingers crossed been a long, long, long time coming. Oh, yeah. Fingers crossed, that'll be amazing. Um, if you have guests, um, you're, I mean, you're talking about circuits, but if, let's say you've got guests who want to do the Kafui and Kayamawa, what would be your uh, recommended um, routing that way? Um, that, that is um, Lusaka Lilong way. Um, uh, if it's only Ila and Kayamawa, which is a, a great itinerary for let's say eight or nine days or so, let's do four days in the bush and four days on the beach and, and two travel days. You can leave um, Ila in the morning um, and still have your lunch 
um, uh, on the beach of Payamala in the afternoon. Late lunch, but it's doable in one day if you fly from Lusaka to Lilongwe um, and then hop on our um, own Ulendo flight straight to the island. And is that with ProFlight? Um, there are several okay. options. There's Malawi, Malawi and Air, um, there's ProFlight, and occasionally there's a third option. There's, there's one or two in normal times, everything. Um, there's there's um, two options every day to get from uh, Lusaka to Lilongwe. Um, great. Um, what would so in terms of your your circuit? Um, what is the recommended international flight connection that will link in with uh, starting Lusaka Livingston and ending in Lilongwe? Would that be Ethiopian, or how are the times going to fit in? Um, should I take that, Roman? Um, it depends a little bit where, where you're coming from. Um, from Europe, um, I often um, have recommended um, Johannesburg um, either via Air France Paris um, and then um, or um, Amsterdam to Johannesburg and then take the early morning flight either to Livingstone or to Lusaka. Um, the first one. Um, leaving Johannesburg at 6.30. Um, um, if your starting point would be Lilongwe, it's actually the same. You could fly to Johannesburg and, and hop on the uh, 10.30 flight to Lilongwe and touch down there at, uh, before lunch. Um, with um, Emirates being a great alternative, um, but, um, you know, uh, the layover at Dubai can be, can, um, extend your travel time uh, um, quite substantially. Um, and Kenya Airways obviously um, connecting both to Lusaka and the long way um, twice a day. Um, that, that's also a good alternative. Um, how many rooms have the camps got in the Kafui again? Um, Chisa is how many and Ila is how many? Ila has 10 tents. Um, of which uh, two are family tents, so they have two bedrooms and sleep, um, you know, two children uh, sharing with adults. And then, so that would be sort of a maximum of 24 if you included um, the four children across the two family tents. And then Chisa has four um, of the bird's nest, so that's um, a maximum of eight. Okay, brilliant. Um... And um, you mentioned that Illa Safari Lodge hasn't closed and that Cinderbees is open. What are you, what measures, what added measures are you taking to keep uh, clients safe against COVID? What, what additional measures are you taking uh, to keep guests also a little bit more separate, et cetera, et cetera, in both those camps? Yeah, well, the, the, the last one is obviously the most important one. Um, um, there is no shared um, activity, so it's all, um, um, families, um, um, uh, groups that travel together on a game by vehicle. There's no mixing whatsoever um, of clients. Um, with all the space we have in our, our lodges and BOMAs, um, yeah, that's quite um, um, easy to obtain. Apart from that, um, we've taken all the stringent hygiene measures that, um, that um, you see around Europe um, and the rest of the world in terms of um, our staff wearing face masks, um, toilets being closed off, um, um, a constant, um, yeah, constant cleaning basically. Um, yeah, um, very, very rigid measures. Um, but, you know, being out in the open, uh, more easy to um, maintain the, the one and a half or two meter distance anyway. No new um, case um, uh, served and, and, and all um, that logical stuff you need to do to reduce um, the risk. Um, there's, by the way, um, more and more information um, coming available about the very low impact of corona in Sub-Saharan Africa. Um, even in a country like South Africa, with probably 55 million people, there's only 264 cases. Um, there's a whole variety of explanations. I won't bother to do with that, just Google it. Why the impact in Sub-Saharan Africa is substantially lower um, yet, but also expected to be 
Um, so I, I dare say that the risk of contamination, uh, well, it's, it's more the other way around, but, um, foreign travels, travelers into those countries than um, that um, it actually spreads um, in sub-Saharan Africa. And that's a bit of a really also aren't that big. You know, if you consider Sindabezi has five rooms and then um, Ila has 10, it's quite easy to, to do the, um, you know, the separate dining and the different dining experiences and then also to split up the activities. So opposed to everybody going on game drive, some would go on game drive, others would do a fishing or boating activity. So everybody's sort of um, kept busy, but within their own activities and then separate um, sort of dining at, um, options in the evenings and, and for meals. So will you going forward also be offering private vehicles to, to everybody? Say that again. Private vehicles, so, so going forward as part of the measures. Will, will yeah, yeah that, that, that was always a, a, a plus option, sort of surplus option. Um, and um, yeah, obviously um, that is now the only way uh, to do it, yeah. Um, do you still count on SAA, Johannesburg to Lusaka and Lilongwe as, as the predominant way in and out of Zambia Malawi? Yeah, um, it might not be called SAA, it might be Erling, um, who seems to be doing um, relatively well. Um, but yeah, if you simply look at the daily demand that was on those routes, um, whether it's SAA or um, um, uh, a new party jumping into the, the traffic is there so yeah it will be served um there's more good news about saa than um, um a couple of weeks ago by the way so it might be good if it's still saa but somebody will cater for those um, um high yield groups anyway can you tell us about the seasons for chisa and shawa please yeah, Roman, you mentioned uh, Chisa's four months. It's it's a bit longer. Um, Which month? Um, yeah, um, next year we will open uh, Chisa June 1, um, and we expect to be able to run that until mid November. Um, and then after that, you know, Busanga being Busanga, it will turn into a big lake. So. Uh, um, and uh, Shawa, as mentioned already, um, May 1 till mid-November as well. Um. Great. Um, I think that might be all the questions um, that we've had on the side here. Um, I was just trying to have a quick scroll. They've come at me on all different areas. Um, I think that might be it for the questions. Is there anything else you'd like to add today? Well, um, maybe famous last words. Um, we, we take great pride in, in being able to, um, to even in the worst case scenario, of no returning business, let's say until April next year, um, to keep most of our staff um, um, retained and busy on great projects um, that, that see to serving the mission, the core mission of conservation and community development. Green Safaris. Um, we're obviously um, privileged to know that we're strong enough um, to stand this up, sit this up. And I can only hope that, um, you know, um, because of, of what we do, um, yeah, we somehow become a preferred um, choice for travelers with a purpose um, as soon as uh, traveling. Uh, becomes possible again. Brilliant. Well, um, we've had lots of lovely thank yous. So um, I really appreciate everybody taking the time today. Uh, thank you very much. If there's anything you would like from us, you can contact um, Bronwyn, Vincent or myself directly. And um, with that, have a, have a lovely day, rest of the day. And we'll look forward to seeing you for the next one. Thank you, Vincent and Bronwyn, very much for your time today as well. And um, we're here to support anything that anyone might need going forward again as well. So thank you very much. Thanks for hosting us, uh, Honor. And thank all you. have a great day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.